more than 400,000. That's how many Americans are testing positive for COVID-19 every single day. The surge after the Christmas weekend has shattered all expectations. And this includes a spike in the number of children infected, just as millions of them are returning to schools. Our health reporter, Lori Johnson, brings us the latest on this raging pandemic. Johns Hopkins reports more than a million new cases were recorded Monday. The massive spike due to the rapid spread of Omicron combined with a backlog of cases not reported over the holiday weekend. Right now, more than 400,000 Americans are testing positive for COVID-19 every day. That's a 200 percent increase since before Christmas, a new record high that health experts predict will get worse before it gets better. Currently, more than 100,000 Americans are hospitalized with the virus, up 130 percent from two months ago. The peak was 137,000 set last January. Right now, 17 percent, or roughly 18,000 of those hospitalized, are in the ICU. But deaths, which are a lagging indicator, are down about 3 percent since two weeks ago. However, there is a new trend. Children's hospitalizations up 66 percent over the week before, 378 admitted last last week, which the CDC says is a new pandemic record. One of those youngsters, Sarah Barlow's two-year-old daughter. The high fevers came in waves. It can get bad. It's not just a simple cold for, for everybody. The FDA authorized booster shots for 12 to 15-year-olds, just as most kids head back to the classroom, despite the surge in cases. There's a lot schools can do to keep infection numbers lower, uh, keep improve ventilation, have kids and adults masking, uh, vaccinate everybody who's eligible. Some school districts like Atlanta, Milwaukee and Newark going back to distance learning, hopefully just this week. Superintendents today are getting phone calls uh, learning that some of their schools may have 5 to 10 percent of their staff not available due to uh, COVID-19. This Friday, the United States Supreme Court will hold a special hearing to consider the legality of two Biden administration vaccine mandates, one for certain health care workers and the other directed at businesses with 100 or more employees. That would affect 84 million workers, Gordon. Tell us about the Supreme Court case. What, what's the issue with the vaccine mand mandates? Well, it's important for our viewers to understand, because a lot of people are worried about this, a couple of things. Number one, one or both of these mandates could be struck down and they could be blocked. A lot of legal experts are expecting that. But if they are upheld, it's important to understand that these the, the workers who work for these larger companies, they do not have to get a vaccine if they don't want one because there is a testing option. A lot of people don't realize that. If you work for one of these companies and the mandate is upheld, all you have to do is tell your employer, I don't want a vaccine and I will submit to the weekly tests. Now, granted, that's a little bit onerous. It's a little bit of a pain. Uh, it's, it's annoying and it could even be expensive for people to do these tests every week. And they also have to mask at work, but they don't have to get a vaccine if they don't want to. Now, the other mandate for the certain healthcare workers, these are people who work for healthcare agencies that are funded by Medicare and Medicaid. So that's Tens of thousands of people, 80,000 people roughly work for these places like nursing homes, and there is no testing option. There's no testing option. So these people have to get a vaccine unless they have a religious or medical exemption. All right. Well, tell us about the CDC. They've now reduced the quarantine period for to just five days if you've been exposed, but you're asymptomatic. Are they getting any pushback on that change? They really are getting a lot of pushback, Gordon, because a lot of health experts are saying, wait a second, 
five days, you could still have it. You could still be contagious. And so they think that it's wise after five days of quarantine, not 10 like before. That was a bit much. But after five days of quarantine, you should at the very least have a negative test. And so it's very likely that the CDC will revise its guidance this week and say that people do need to test after that five days. They have to have a negative test before they can reenter society, go back and to work and whatnot. The only problem is, of course, those tests are very hard to find. I don't know if you've tried to find one. I have. I've scoured all the drug stores in this area, not one home test to be found. And the lines for the PCR tests, those are often hours long. Well, well Catherine got us stocked up right before Christmas, so we're, we're good to go for a couple of months. Uh, and it's, it's great when you get the negative result back. It, it really uh, does help your, your mental state. Uh, let's talk about the differences in the various uh, variations where you have uh, Omicron that's supposedly less deadly than Delta. So what's the breakdown of the current caseload, Delta versus Omicron? Well, nationwide, the CDC said five days ago that Omicron made up 58 percent of the cases and Delta made up 42 percent. That was different from what they originally said earlier. They said 72 percent of the cases were Omicron. Then they revised that and got more data. So we're still dealing and that's nationwide. So in certain areas, it could vary. So we're still dealing with the 60, 40, maybe 50, 50 split. And as you pointed out, Gordon, the Delta variant is much much more virulent. We're seeing much more severe cases um, in people who have Delta. All right. Um, is there any hope here? I mean, it looks like we're going from variant to variant. Uh, do you see any light at the end of the tunnel? You know, assuming people get vaccinated, get the boosters, get whatever they need. Um, are we going to see a, 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 an end to COVID? Are we going to see herd immunity? What, what, what's your prediction? Well, a lot of health experts didn't even predict Omicron. Some of them were saying Delta was going to be the last wave and then it would be pretty much an endemic. Most health experts are saying that coronavirus is not going to go away ever. It's probably going to be endemic, sort of like the flu where we get a shot every year. And um, some cases in people who are high risk could be deadly, but for other people who, especially those who have been vaccinated or have some level of immunity, it's not going to be as virulent. So that's what a lot of the health experts are saying. But, you know, they've been wrong before. A lot of people thought, you know, in at the beginning of this summer, it was gone for good when we saw the cases and the deaths go way down. And then it came roaring back, as you know. All right. Um, I guess I should encourage China to stop investigating bat viruses. It might be good for all of us to leave them in the cave. Laurie, thanks for the re report and thanks for the update. In other Thanks, news, a federal court has interceded on behalf of military members seeking religious exemptions from the Pentagon's vaccine mandate. Efren Graham has more on that story from our CBN newsroom. Efren? Gordon, the U.S. District Court in northern Texas granted an injunction to keep the Pentagon from punishing 35 Navy sailors who refused to take the vaccine because of their religious objections. The group includes Navy SEALs and members of the Navy Special Warfare Command who cited, quote, sincerely held religious beliefs based on their Christian faith. The judge wrote, while we ask the military to serve and sacrifice, quote, we do not ask them to lay aside their citizenry and give up the very rights they have sworn to protect. Thousands of military members have sought religious exemptions to the Pentagon's vaccine mandate, but so far, none have been granted. A winter snowstorm shut down the nation's capital and brought chaos to travelers. In northern Virginia, hundreds of drivers were stranded overnight on Interstate 95, some for as long as 15 hours. Virginia alone saw more than 500 crashes on the roads. At D.C.'s three major airports, half of all flights were delayed or canceled and more than 3,000 flights were grounded nationwide. Across the country, nearly one million homes and businesses were left without power. Temperatures now plunging as much as 15 to 20 degrees below average in some areas. Two more rounds of snow could be on the way later this week. Turning now to the Philippines, CBN's Operation Blessing team spent Christmas serving victims of Typhoon Ray. As Lucille Toulousan reports, they went to remote islands bringing cheer, hope, and God's love to thousands of homeless typhoon survivors. 
the power of the catastrophic Category 5 Cyclone Rai is seen in this actual cell phone video. These residents used a piece of plywood as a shield against flying iron sheets and other debris. Although they fled to an evacuation center for safety, strong winds and rain tore the roof off the building, exposing them to more danger. They believe that the faith and prayers of the children saved them. I told them, don't cry. Papa Jesus will save us. Just relax. Papa Jesus will stop the storm. No casualties were reported in their village, but this is what is left of the coastal community. These villagers are now in urgent need of food and clean water. Grace Kapangpangan is due to give birth any time. She is distressed over the tragedy they now face. All the houses in their village were wiped out. We don't have a house and we don't know where to start, where to get the money to buy food. All our rice got wet and all our belongings blown away by the strong winds. Operation Blessing immediately coordinated with the Philippine Armed Forces, local government units, and church partners. OB was the first non-government organization to help most of the communities of Shargao and the Dinagat Islands, right on Christmas Day. Without your help, we will not have anything to eat today. Thank you so much to all of you who extended assistance to us. Thank you so much. Also, on the island of Leyte in central Philippines, tens of thousands were left homeless by Typhoon Rai. Many of them, like Jennifer Dan Howe and her family, now live in makeshift tents along the road. Jennifer shared her Christmas wish with CBN News. I just want for my family to be more comfortable, especially during the cold nights. Jennifer got her wish when another Operation Blessing team saw them camped along the road and gave her family and her neighbors food bags containing rice, noodles, canned goods, water, coffee, and New Testament Bibles. They also received much-needed mats and blankets. I am so happy because you gave us a mat and the blanket will keep us warm. We can use them for the rest of our lives. And we have food for Christmas that will last until the new year. Thank you so much. Despite difficulty in transporting much-needed relief, Operation Blessing made it to the hardest-hit islands over the Christmas holidays, bringing the spirit of good cheer, hope, and love to the typhoon survivors. Lucille Talusan, CBN News. And we can all be the hands and feet of Papa Jesus by helping Operation Blessing. Gordon? Yes, and if you're a member of the 700 Club, you're part of those hands and feet. You're part of that relief effort. If you're not a member, I invite you to join with us. If you want to give specifically to disaster relief, whether in the Philippines or the uh, aftermath of those horrible tornadoes in Kentucky, Tennessee, other places in our country, we're, we're, we're there. We want to be the hands and feet extended in love and compassion to those who are suffering in the middle of a disaster. So if you want to contribute, you can write to us, CBN Center, Virginia Beach, Virginia, 23463. You can text, we have a text to give now, OBDR, so that's Operation Blessing Disaster Relief, OBDR to 71777. Or you can go to CBN.com. There's a place where you can designate your gift to Operation Blessing Disaster Relief. Either way, do it now. Be, be part of the solution. I love to say when disasters strike, we want to strike back. And we want to strike back with love and compassion to let people know that we care, that we love them. God loves them. We want to see them through. You can be part of it. 1-800-700-7000. In Nigeria, Afghanistan, and the Philippines, ISIS is once again rearing its ugly head. Now the Islamic terrorist group has an East African nation of Uganda in the crosshairs. Both Russia and North Korea are helping provide the terrorists with weapons and money. So the U.S. is being called upon to help the Africans fight back. Gary Lane reports on this rising threat. The defeat of ISIS in Syria caused the terror threat to spread. One region is East Africa, where Uganda is taking the brunt. People there are on edge. 
bracing for more attacks following several deadly suicide bombings this past fall. Sam Childers is an American missionary based in Uganda. It all started October 24th was the first bombing. Uh, it actually went off in a restaurant. A lot of people were injured. Uh, there was only one person that got killed that day. But right now, you never know when something's going to happen. That attack was followed by twin bombings in late November. Six people were killed. Three dozen others were injured in the heart of Kampala. While the Islamic State claimed responsibility, officials blamed the attacks on an affiliated group known as the Allied Democratic Forces. The ADF is based in the neighboring Democratic Republic of the Congo. Some officials believe the ADF wants to overthrow the Ugandan government and impose an Islamic State. Others say the attacks are in retaliation for Ugandan army efforts to defeat al-Shabaab terrorists in Somalia. I can't even understand people why they would want to harm somebody like they're doing. And they don't even care if it's another Muslim. All they want to do is kill, and it reminds me of Joseph Kony. Kony is the leader of the Lord's Resistance Army, or LRA. For more than 20 years, it waged war on the Ugandan government, killing civilians, terrorizing women, and kidnapping children. Known as the machine gun preacher, Childers rescued many of those abducted and established several orphanages to keep them safe. Eventually defeated by the Ugandan army, remnants of the LRA terror group fled across the border. And what about this new threat from Islamic militants? I believe that they just want to try to take over the, uh, the country. I believe that they want to put a threat there so maybe they can get some leeway. But one thing that I know, I know the president of Uganda, and he knows how to handle these guys very serious. This allied democratic forces group, it may be harder for the Ugandan military to defeat a terrorist organization than it did an actual militia like Joseph Kony's LRA. So how great is the threat, in your opinion, in the long term? I believe there's going to be more of the terrorism. I believe that the president, I believe the UPDF will get control, but they're going to have to get to the root of the problem. That may require hunting down Islamic terrorists and fighting them throughout the region. We've taken our eyes off off the ball relating to Africa. The terrorist groups in, in Africa are blossoming as we speak. Eric Karen is a former special agent who held senior positions with the U.S. Treasury and Homeland Security Departments, as well as Interpol, the International Criminal Police Organization. Karen and other intelligence experts believe Muslim terror groups are operating training camps in Sudan, South Sudan, and Uganda. And while the United States is keeping a close eye on President Putin's intentions in Ukraine, Karen believes Russian activities in Africa pose a greater threat. The Russians are supplying various entities in Africa, countries and, and entities, if you will, gangs, with weapons. Um, and that's troublesome. That's, that's not a good sign. Flooding African nations and Islamic terrorist groups with billions of dollars worth of military equipment, says Karen from helicopters to rocket-propelled grenades and even night vision goggles. And it's not only the Russians. Karen says Kim Jong-un is also spreading his influence in East Africa. The relationship with the North Korean government uh, and the Ethiopian government relating to the uh, manufacturing of uh, munition items is troublesome to me. Karen met with Ethiopian officials to encourage them to end their relationship with North Korea a designated state sponsor of terror. So what more can be done to counter the growing threat? Karen believes the U.S. military needs to train police and armies in the region to help them fight Islamic extremism. If not, more deadly terrorist attacks may lie ahead. I hate to see, obviously, good people die. And uh, unfortunately, I, I, you know, I think that's uh, coming down the road. Gary Lane, CBN News. Well, it's absolutely horrible what's happening in Africa today. These are stories that many people don't even see uh, because it's just so confusing. How many different groups, how many different gangs, who's involved on, on the supply side of uh, weapons, what's their motivation for doing that? Um, it's one thing to say it's, it's some kind of simple, it's Muslim ideology, but it's far more complicated than that. And it just seems to be never ending. Uh, please pray for Africa. This is a country that God loves, uh, a continent that God loves dearly. And how can we be part of a, 
a group that says, no, the, this way of violence that you've, that you've embraced for decades, can it break? Can we finally come to peace? Can we finally live in harmony? And can we finally have stable governments? If that were to happen, Africa could be a powerhouse in the world. And that would be a wonderful thing. Terry? The story you're about to see involves horrific abuse and tremendous redemption. The graphic descriptions are disturbing and not suitable for children. Jennifer Bonnet was a child herself when she was forced to take part in satanic rituals at the hands of her very own parents. Here's what happened in her own words. There were sexual things that I had to do. There were sexual things that I had seen, and there were sacrifices that I had seen. I hated myself. I didn't know who I was. I felt so alone. The childhood memories come in bits and pieces for Jennifer Bonnet. It's the bad ones, those twisted and satanic rituals she wishes she could forget. I remember the black curtain went going down through a corridor. The smell was like a death and sweat. I remember pentagrams up on the wall, the glasses that we would drink blood from. I would get raped quite often. It's just a matter of blocking and blacking it out. It was Jennifer's parents who subjected her to satanic rituals, which included being raped often by a close relative. By eight years old, Jennifer was cutting in hopes the abuse would stop, but it didn't. I cut in my private places. I thought if I had done that, then I would definitely be left alone there. Then there were the voices, those that told her she was so worthless that even God didn't care. In my mindset, I thought that I was this huge mistake and God was trying to take me out and I was gonna beat him. While the abuse had stopped by the time Jennifer was nine, she would carry the pain and scars for years to come. She was a troubled, rebellious teen who got pregnant when she was 16. It was then her mother made Jennifer get an abortion and kicked her out of the house. And told me to never contact her or anyone in the family. It did something to me, like, with all that anger and hate, it's like it pumped me up to survive, to make it. It's almost like it motivated me. I'll show you. She moved in with her boyfriend's family and they married. For the next 16 years, Jennifer lived her life addicted to alcohol and drugs. Her husband abused her physically and sexually, at times beating her unconscious. I didn't know that I could get help, and I was scared. He would threaten that he would kill me if I ever left. Jennifer was 34 and a mother of four when she finally got the courage to run, taking her two youngest children with her. After a short stay at a battered women's shelter, she found herself homeless and taking Oxycontin and shooting up morphine. Now divorced, Jennifer lost her children to foster care and would spend another 10 years addicted to drugs and in and out of a number of psychiatric hospitals and rehab facilities. Those reoccurring voices yelling and screaming at me, I'm a mistake, I'm a loser. It was just an ongoing self-destruction and it just got worse and worse. Then at 44 years old, living in her car and working as a waitress, she met a Christian woman who told Jennifer she believed God wanted her to move in with her. For her to say what she said, that God sent her in there, I felt like maybe he's trying to save me. So after all I've been through in my life, I thought I could give it a try. Again, Jennifer attempted rehab and failed. This time though, she felt there was someone who could help. I was on my knees actually shooting up. I started crying and I said, if there is a God and you are real, I need you. Because I can't stop, please, you've got to help me. Afterward, she met a pastor who helped her get into the faith-based rehab program, Teen Challenge. After a couple of months, 
at the age of 44, she surrendered her life to Christ. She said that Jesus offered peace. So that's what led me to believe Jesus died on the cross for me. Then, Jennifer began a 12-month discipleship program that helped her walk away from her addictions and find healing from the past. From the drug use, Jesus delivered me completely from that as soon as I walked through the door so that I could focus on Him and get free from all the pain and suffering that I was in. I was in a lot of torment. I had a lot of oppression. They helped me through the process of releasing my fear and anger from being in rituals, the self-hatred I had. They helped me go through the pain and releasing that. And on that journey to healing, I had to learn to forgive. And once I realized that I can give that to Jesus, and let him work with them, it helps me learn to accept being forgiven by Jesus for all the things I have done. I have a life full of gratitude from what Jesus has saved me from. Today, Jennifer is married to Bobby and is a licensed minister who works with women in a Christian addiction recovery program. Everything that I've been desiring and for my whole entire life, I'm experiencing that in Jesus Christ and the freedom that I have in Him and the peace that I have. He's the only one that can save you and free you and deliver you. There is hope. It's Jesus Christ. She's right. There is hope, and it is Jesus Christ. You know, sometimes when we get hurt, I, I mean, it's hard to almost imagine the things that Jennifer went through, isn't it? And one of the things we do when we're hurt is we shut down our hearts, you know? We just want to protect ourselves from no more pain, no more abuse. And so we shut down our hearts, and when we do that, we shut down our hearts to goodness as well. But we're so fearful, so afraid. You know, the Bible says many, many times, fear not, do not be afraid. Jesus comes in as the Prince of Peace to bring hope and to bring peace into very dark places, places that when we're wounded, you and I can't fix on our own. We just can't. We're trapped by all of that. Her life was so abused, the enemy was clearly after her. And yet what I want you to see is that she was set free. In the end, she was set free. The one that the sun sets free is free indeed. That's what the Word of God says. Jesus said, I came, I came to set the captive free. You know, the plan of God is so amazing. It's so big and yet in some ways so simple. What it takes to set us free, to take us out of the captivity of whatever it is that's been trying to ravage our lives, set our feet on the rock of Jesus Christ and get us a whole new beginning. Where else do you get that? Where else? Would Jennifer have found that kind of healing, that kind of release from pain, that kind of a trust and a willingness, even that comes from God, opening up her heart. You know, maybe he really d is trying to help me. I want to say that to you today. Jesus is trying to help you. Here's the thing about it that's so amazing. The creator of the universe comes after us. The Bible says it's not his desire that anyone should perish, not anyone. So he's coming after you in the middle of your pain, in the middle of your loss, in the middle of your emptiness, in the middle of your addiction to whatever it is you've used to, to kind of take away that hurt, that pain, to, to shove it underneath so you don't have to feel it anymore, but it's still there. And so it controls you. Do you want to be set free? You can be today. Jesus is coming after you today. It's not chance that you have heard Jennifer's story. Your circumstances may be different, but the emptiness, the lostness, the desire to be set free is the same. 
and you can have it. You can't get good enough for it, and you don't have to pay for it. You need to ask for it. And that's what happens for each and every one of us, where you get down on your knees and you say, God, I recognize that I'm out of control and I can't do this on my own. So I'm asking you, Jesus, Savior of the world, to come into my heart, come into the center of my life, my circumstances, my situation, which feels so hopeless. Save me. I'm asking you to save me from myself, from the things that have been done to me, from the world around me. I'm confessing my sins to you. They're great, and you know each and every one. God, come into my heart and forgive my sins. And then help me to forgive those who've taken advantage of me, who've abused me, who've used me, in whatever way that's happened. Jesus, be the Prince of Peace in my heart and in my life. Teach me your ways. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I want to live for you. I want to walk with you. I want to think with you. I want to know your heart, God, and I want you to heal mine. And I'm asking all of this in the mighty name of Jesus. Listen, if you've prayed that prayer, then your relationship with God is just beginning. We've got something to help you grow in that. What do you do now that you've released all of this to Jesus? This is called a new day. It's a packet that was made just for you and it's free. So is the phone call to get it. If you'd like a new day, which is what you're starting right now, call our toll-free number 1-800-700-7000. Just say, I'd like the new day packet. We'll get it out to you right away. And welcome back to the 700 Club for this CBN News Break. The number of murders skyrocketed in cities around the nation in 2021. Chicago and Cook County reported 1,002 gun-related murders in 2021, the most ever. Atlanta passed its 2020 total with at least 158 homicides last year. Oakland, California hit a 15-year high, and in Cleveland, murders jumped 29% over the previous year. New Orleans had its highest murder toll since 2004. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer announced the Senate will vote on easing filibuster rules to help pass a controversial election reform law. Critics charge the bill takes election laws out of state's hands and mandates national rules, such as no excuse mail-in voting, same-day voter registration, and easing voter ID requirements. In the evenly divided Senate, Democrats are trying to get past the 60 votes needed to overcome a filibuster. I'd like to remind you, you can always get the latest news from CBN News by going to our website at CBNNews.com. Kleinman says the proudest moment of his life was when he cheated the angel of death in the Dachau concentration camp. Joseph lived on to fight in Israel's War of Independence in 1948 and later testified in the Nuremberg trials. Today, this hero lives in Israel, where he recently suffered a serious infection. When Yosef Kleinman holds the same striped hat he was forced to wear as a boy in Auschwitz, memories of life in the Nazi concentration camp come flooding back. It was chaos as my family left the train. My father was dehydrated, so I helped him walk. Then a guard separated us into two lines. I went to the right, to life, and father was sent left to death. Yosef saw the black smoke of the chimneys, and a fellow prisoner told him that was his family. Yosef was processed into the camp where he received a jacket with a number and later came face to face with the man known as the Angel of Death. Joseph Mengele was personally selecting older boys to work in the Dachau camp. I wasn't big enough to be selected. But when Mengele wasn't looking, I slipped into the older boys' group. That is the proudest moment of my life, knowing that I cheated the angel of death. Yosef was the youngest survivor to be liberated from Dachau by the Americans. He made his way to Israel, where he fought in the 1948 War of Independence, and he testified in the Nuremberg trials. Now he's almost 90 and lives in Jerusalem with his wife. The years and the physical torment of the camps are catching up to him. 
I had heart surgery and lost a lot of weight. My jaw shrank and my dentures wouldn't fit properly, causing sores in my mouth and an infection. It was a nightmare because I couldn't eat and it brought back memories of not having food in the camps. Yosef doesn't have much money and dentures are expensive. So CBN Israel bought him a brand new set. We even got him his favorite snacks to enjoy with his new teeth. Thanks to the new dentures, his infections are healed. He's eating well and recovering quickly, making him and his wife very happy. I am so grateful for all that you have done. It's wonderful to be able to eat again and be healthy. Thanks to CBN Israel donors, Yosef can enjoy a better quality of life, and that helps keep the trauma of Auschwitz at bay. It's a great feeling to know that as I get older, I can look to you for support. Thank you for everything that you have done for me and other Holocaust survivors. And that thank you goes all the way from Israel to you if you're a member of the 700 Club. If you're not a member, I invite you to join with us. Uh, it's just $20 a month. That breaks out to 65 cents a day. Some of you can give at a higher level. We have 700 Club Gold at $40 a month. We also have 1,000 Club. That's $1,000 a year, and that breaks out to $84 a month. At whatever level, call us now, 1-800-700-7000. And if you want to designate your gift to CBN Israel to help Holocaust survivors, to help new immigrants, to help our CBN News Bureau in Jerusalem, to help produce all these wonderful documentaries on Israel, uh, you can be a part of that by just uh, saying, I want to help. I want to be a part of CBN Israel and designate your gift. There's a couple of ways you can do it. One is just call and say, I want to give to CBN Israel. The other way is to go on CBN.com. There's a place on the giving page where you can designate your gift. Either way, do it now. 1-800-700-7000. Abelina was in agony with shoulder pain from a pulled muscle. Her doctor said time would heal her. Well, days turned into weeks, then months, and then even years of suffering. Then one day, she was instantly healed, and here is how it happened. There are few things that would keep Abelina Martinez from her garden. That's my therapy, I, I call it, because I love working in the yard doing stuff. So I take my Bible out there and just read on it, you know, and admire how God does. There was one thing that spoiled her joy. It started in July of 2018. She had just come off a ladder after trimming a tree. You know, so I was cutting it and cutting, and I cut all the branches. I mean, I finished. And I said, all right, thank God I'm done with this thing. Then I realized what I had done, you know. What she had done was injure her shoulder. I was just hurting bad. You know, I thought it was just something that would go away. But then by the next day, you know, I thought, no, 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 uh, there's more to this because it was hurting more, you know, and more. Finally, after a couple of days, she went to her doctor. So I thought, maybe I pulled something. And sure enough, he said, well, it's just a, a pull muscle. So I thought, oh, well, that's why it hurts so bad. He said, yeah, it'll be okay. So he gave me some relaxers or whatever. He says, once you start taking this, you'll, you'll be fine in a week or so. But it didn't go away, so I thought, hmm. Actually, it stayed for another three years, restricting her range of motion. My my pain that I had was all like right here, and it would go to 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 my like to my neck and down, you know. It got to the point she couldn't enjoy working in her garden like she always had. By then, she realized the only one who could help was God. Well, I would say, Lord, I can't take this crazy thing anymore. I got to do stuff, you know, and. So I would say, will you please just take this thing, put it together. I'll just wait on you, but I'll let you do it when your time, not mine. And as a CBN partner and viewer of the 700 Club, Abelina hoped for a word from God. Then one day, while she and her husband Vic were watching the show, Pat had a word of knowledge about someone's shoulder. Just reach out and touch that shoulder and move it, and it's right back in place, and then all the pain will leave in Jesus' name. Oh, that's me, that's me, that's me. And I started, you know, just moving my, my arm all excited and everything. Praise God, yes. Today, Abelina is still pain-free. And I, I believe, you know, God has something special for each and every one of us. If, if we trust and we keep praying, 
hanging in there. He'll come through every time, so, yeah. Yeah, he comes through every time. He's got something special just for you. I love her prayer. Lord, I've got things to do. I don't have time for this. I've got things to do. And start, start thinking about that. And think in this way. What does God have for you to do? And when you wrap your mind around that, wrap your heart around that, that he has created good things for you to walk into, uh, good works. He's done that from the foundation of the world. So it's absolutely amazing to me that when God created everything, he was thinking about you. He was thinking about me. He was thinking about, well, what good things can they do that will satisfy them? And, and, and give you that wonderful sense that, of accomplishment, of purpose. These are amazing things that God saw that and thought that uh, before he started all of this. I, found that, I find that just staggering. So in that, is God going to let a pulled muscle get in the way of his plan? Now, her prayer was, I've got things to do. Well, realize God's prayer is, you've got things to do. And when you line that up and you say, okay, uh, God, I agree with you. I agree that you have things for me to do. I agree that my time here is not done. I agree that there's things that you want me to accomplish. I want to be all in. It's in that agreement that you find this wonderful promise from the Psalms. Your people will be willing in the day of your power. When you say, God, I'm all in, I'm all in with you. What do you want me to do? What would you have me to do? Uh, that it's, there's a power connection that comes from that. Your people will be willing in the day of your power. If you want to release miracle power, Say, God, my, let, let not my will be done, but your will be done. Your plans are a whole lot better. Uh, you've got a way to think these things through that I don't have. I want to be part of your plan. And when you do that, miracles can happen. You can just feel it. It's like the atmosphere changes all around you. Now, get ready to pray. And in preparation, start examining what your What's your motivation? What's your heart goal? What do you want to do with life? Uh, what do you want to be? Where, where do you envision yourself? All of these things, can you get that lined up with the will of God? Can you get all in with his will? Your people will be willing in the day of your power. Now, while you're doing that, we've got some other miracle reports. We're going to pray, but we want to encourage you. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. When you hear these testimonies, it releases faith into your life. So here's Geneva. She's living in Mississippi. She's got arthritis in her hands, and she thought her baking days were over. So her, her purpose, I love to bake. <laughs> it was, her hands were stuck in a C shape, and she couldn't open them all the way. She was watching the 700 Club right before Christmas, December 23rd. She heard Terry say, you have arthritis so bad in your hands, it just aches. You like to bake and cook, and you don't realize how much you use your hands for that until you're in pain. God is healing that arthritis for you right now. Well, Geneva believed God for her healing immediately able to open her hands without any pain. She got up the next morning, isn't that wonderful? And she baked a double batch of tea cakes. And you go, Geneva, that's awesome. That is awesome. What a great report. Well, this is Gail Gordon, who lives in Tomball, Texas. She has a grandson, Nicholas, who was in bad shape in the hospital after he'd been bitten by a tick. Gail was watching this program, and Gordon, you gave a word of knowledge that she knew was for Nicholas. You said, there's someone else with a bacterial infection from a tick bite. It's caused all kinds of problems with your health. God is healing your body now. Receive it. Receive everything that he has, everything with your internal organs, everything concerning your mind, everything concerning you right now is being restored and made whole. Within minutes of the prayer, Nicholas called his Grandma Gail and said he received his healing.
healing. Doctors confirmed Nicholas could have gone blind. Instead, he is completely healed. That's a miracle because very often, even if you get well after a tick bite, there are residual issues. Yeah, He's residual problems healed. and yeah. hallelujah. Um, hallelujah. <laughs> uh, I look forward to the life of St. Nicholas. Isn't that great? Nicholas, touched by God. Uh, you can be touched by God Almighty. Let's pray, let's believe, and let God do all the rest. Lord, we come to you, we come to you, and we declare that we're willing. We want to lay down all of our dreams, all of our aspirations, anything that's not from you. And we want to seize the dream that you have for us, the good things that you have for us. We want to trade everything for that. So Lord God Almighty, stretch forth your hand to do miracles, signs, and wonders. Let there be healing in people's bodies now. From the top of their head to the soles of their feet, may they be restored and healed now. There's someone you have tremendous numbness that uh, literally goes from your collarbone down to your fingertips. I don't know the cause. I just know this, this specific s s symptom. God is healing. He's restoring full movement. Uh, it's going to be awkward and a, and a bit painful at first, but he's going to give you full movement back into that left arm. In Jesus' name, be healed and be made whole. Terry? Yeah, there's someone else. You have some kind of a condition that's impacted by what you eat. It's so discouraging for you because many of the things that you're now not able to eat are things that you really love, and some of the things you should eat you don't like. God is changing your taste buds right now and turning your heart toward the things that are healthy. Instead of lamenting over what's had to be let go of, bacon is one of the things that just comes to mind right now. Just lift up your hands and receive his grace for the hour that you're in and for the health that he's promised you. Uh, someone you have heart trouble and it's specific to the left ventricle. God is healing that for you now. Everything is going to be normal. Heart's going to be normal. Everything's going to close properly. Everything's going to open properly. Everything concerning your heart is now healed. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you've been touched, let us know. Give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. Here's a word from Psalms. You crowd the year with your goodness, and your paths drip with abundance. For all of us here, God bless you, and may you have a very happy new year.